So I've got a basic text layer here, and if I want to manipulate the letters to give it a little bit more of a customized look, I can use the work path of the letters and manipulate the anchor point. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to duplicate my current layer, Control J, and just so you can see what I'm starting with and what I ended up with. So I'm going to work on the bottom one down here, so I'm going to turn this off for now. So on the copy layer, what we're going to do is we're going to right mouse click on the layer in the layers panel and we're going to choose create work path. And what you really can't see is the actual path. So what you're going to do is turn off the layer visibility and now you can see basically what looks like an outline for the different letters. So what we do on a new layer, we use our, we have path selection. So I'm going to zoom in here, um, two different arrows or tools in here, path selection. When I click on the path, you can see that all of the anchors in this S here are selected. So if I pick it up with the black arrow, I'm pick up the entire path. So I can move the entire path. If you go one tool deeper and do direct select, let me deselect here, you can see that we have what are called hollow anchor points and they're not selected. But each one of these can be individually manipulated. So if I click on it, you can see it's selected. So there's a difference between a square and a circle. So the square is the actual anchor point. So I'm going to grab this little solid square and pull it. And what you're seeing here, are these dots, these are your directional handles. So I can alter the curve by pulling these directional handles. Okay, and then I can turn it and change the arc within the curve. So it doesn't really work that well with this particular letter, um, but just giving you an idea. Now, if I go over to the A, so I can see all the anchors. If I want to grab a bunch of anchors at once, I can do a click and drag to select. Actually, I think I'm going to work on the M. It's a little bit easier. So let's say I want to manipulate how tall the M is. So here you can see all of the different anchor points. But if I want to extend the bottom of the M down, I can click and drag over this and it's only going to select the anchors that I dragged in the marquee. Now I can grab a hold of the anchor, um, actually the line segment, and you can see I can pull it down. Now if it starts to go in a different direction um, and you want to keep it straight, hold your shift key. All right, so if I wanted to pull the bottom of the M over here, or let's say, for example, shorten it, I can push up. Now I have to be careful that I don't end up you know, overlapping something here. So I'm going to actually undo that. Let's just extend it. So I'm going to grab the bottom section only, grab the actual line segment, not the actual anchor point, and pull it down. I'm going to hold my shift key. Now, if I want to line them up exactly, I can, I have my rulers on here. If you don't have your rulers on, you can do control R and you can pull a guide here. And then that way you can kind of see if you're trying to get these actually even with each other. So the S kind of looks silly here, but you get the idea. So if I want to extend, for example, the L, you can kind of do that same idea, pull it up. If I want to extend the bottom of the L, you can do the same thing if I want it to line up. Here I can use the guide from the ruler. So again, for guides, you just click and drag off the ruler and then you can just put it where you want it. So if I wanted to extend another letter up, now I can use this guide. And the guides are not printable. They're just there for reference only. If you do control semicolon, they will disappear. If you turn the, it's basically an on off toggle. So after, let's just say you've manipulated your font to be um, the way that you want it. I'm um, going to deselect here. So you're on your empty layer. You're actually going to hit Control Enter, which will make a selection out of whatever your current path is. And based on your foreground color, if I I can either fill it with the paint bucket or I can do the keyboard shortcut Alt Backspace, which is a little bit faster. So whatever my current foreground color is. So I'm going to pick something different here. Now Alt Backspace and I have now filled the pixels. So control D to deselect and there's my original. So you can compare. So you can give something, you know, the S looks a little silly, but you get the idea. 
um, of how you can customize a font. It's very simple to do once you create the work path. So this layer here, the red layer, um, it's not editable text. It's basically turned into pixels, whereas this layer here, if I went in and I wanted to, you know, change the font or spell the word differently, you know, this doesn't make any sense, but um, so this is actually editable. This one is not. But anything you can do to pixels, you can do to this particular layer. So I could control T, you know, I could resize it, I could rotate it. It's basically just a pixel layer.